Well, the new board has finally arrived for the Webasto that changes it from this CAN bus controlled and knackered, well, probably knackered board into one that, that does not require any CAN bus signal. You just give it a switched uh, 12 volt positive and away it goes. All right, I shall bring you down for a closer look at the two boards together. Right, here are the two said boards. This one is the original Webasto. And from my layman's eyes, the replacement board looks a lot less complicated. Very similar looking, very similar, but seems to have a lot less components, which is, well, a lot less things to go wrong by the looks of it. And uh, I hope you can see it's a direct fitment. You just take this old board out and put this one in and plug everything back in and you're good to go. That's it. There's no messing about. You don't have to solder anything. You don't have to do anything, basically. Just take this one out. Put this one in, you're done. So this board was a hundred pounds or a hundred and something pounds plus shipping from Hungary. I will leave the link to the eBay in the description should you wish to purchase one. Now the only thing I have noticed that the Webasto board is that this one isn't is this is conformally coated so it keeps the moisture off the electronics. I don't know if you can see this sort of varnishy looking paint on it. This is not coated or it certainly doesn't look like it's got any coating on it. It might have, but I don't see the usual signs of well, you can you can see on top of the chips as a blob. So it's not conformally coated, so it's not as waterproof as that one. Then again, all you have to do is buy a tin of conformal coated, spray it yourself, and that's you, you're just as good. Well, let's see it now. Let's put it back in the Webasto, which is over here with the circuit board missing from here. And it's just hanging up there because I can't get this back bracket to come off to attach anything else. So that's the Webasto and the pump. There's a pump. Pump there. Uh, fuel, no, water pump is that one. Fuel pump is all there. And my hideous mess of wiring is all there. Power supply. The only thing I haven't got is a switch. So I'm just using a bare wire and then another positive bare wire. And that starts up and fires it off. As I say, installing it is just as simple as taking the old board out and then Put the new one in, and then plugging everything back in. Yeah, again. Remember, there's still that this stupid thing that it's a, a hex torx. It's a torx, not a bolt, and that holds. Presuming a temperature sensor and like a heat sink for one of the rectifiers in place. You probably can't see it because of my arm at the moment, but it's literally a plug it all back in. Glow plug fan, fuel pump, and a, a control wire, which is here, which goes out to the fuel pump. No, it's not a fuel pump. I meant the fan. One of them is a fan and the glow plug. Not the right way around. That's the wrong plug, you moron. That goes on there. And then main 12 volt source goes in there. And once the power supply is done, done, she is hot to trot once we connect this orange wire do the positive in the power supply, that will fire up and away we'll go. Right, I thought I might as well run all the tests at once while we're firing us up. So, temperature of the water to start with is 13 degrees. I have the fuel sitting on the little purple scale over here. And it's at 660 grams. So we shall fire this up, I'll let it run for half an hour, and then we'll see what temperature the water is at the end of half an hour, and how much fuel it's used, that'll let us work out the kilowatts of diesel it's consumed versus what it's output, and give us our efficiency. So, let us fire it up. Okay, here's my orange trigger wire. Here is my 12 volt positive feed coming from the power supply, and then we just touch them together, wind it around. Leave us in there. Okay, can you hear that noise? That is the noise of the MOSFET driving the glow plug. People have said, well, um, one person said it was uh, noisy. This perhaps is the noise they're referring to. But once the glow plug goes out, it doesn't make that noise anymore. So, fuel pump started priming, has started pumping. And uh, we'll now just let it do its thing. 
Hope they're all light. Hope I didn't need to bleed the fuel pump again. Pretty confident I didn't light the first time. Nope, failure to light on first attempt. Well, first attempt since I ran at last. Yeah, there it goes. It's uh, filled it full of diesel. But, I always lights in the end stroke. Must have just needed the, the diesel to circulate. That's fine, we can, we'll let it fire up for a second go. Okay, attempt two. I'm gonna start doing the timing pumping from when the fuel pump starts ticking until it stops ticking when I turn it off. That'll be the same as the other one that we tested, so it's fair. Well, according by the sound of it, it has started. Okay, I've started the timing on the phone. We shall come back in half an hour. Measuring 59, 60, nice round 60 degrees, we call it. Just bang that in there a bit. 59, 60. So, half an hour has raised the temperature up to 60 degrees from the 13 that it started at. Okay, well, I did try the diagnostics with the laptop and my OBD ad adapter here, and it didn't work, but <clears throat> that's not the ECU thing's fault, I imagine it's my set, I don't even know if it's that. it did work, it used to work but I don't know if my set worked, so that's that's a slight fail but maybe we'll come back to it one day if I buy a new adapter and you know, make it work better probably, but that's not really the important bit, the important bit is that the heater actually heats up and works and I've just reran the test there to see how much fuel it used in 10 minutes and according to the thing it used 20 grams, 20 grams of diesel in 10 minutes. So I'll be able to work that into my calculations. It's just uh, spooling down at the moment. I've got the extractor fan on cause it's, uh, well, a bit smoky in here cause it, I was uh, fiddling about with it. Uh, if you can hear any beeping in the background, it's the O2 and carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide sensors that are plugged in charging and they're all turned on. And they're all going crazy. That's that now finishing its cool down cycle, which you can probably hear. So when it just blows air through, that's fine. Just gonna turn the fan off. In your own time. Any second now. Okay, let's run these numbers. So we started with 13 degrees. We finished at 60 degrees, which gives us our change of temperature, 47 degrees and the mass was 10 litres, which is 10 kilograms of water. So we imparted 1.9 megajoules of energy into that water. Uh, just for those who are interested, 1.9 megajoules in 30 minutes is about 1 kilowatt of energy we put into the thing, give or take. Now, in that 30 minutes, we used 60 grams of diesel. So we need to convert the grams to litres, and it's, well, the, energy, the density of diesel is that much. This does it for us. There we go. 0 0.07 litres we used. So that's, so we've got 0 0.7 litres now. 0 0.07 litres should give us 2.68 megajoules of energy, assuming a perfect conversion. So, two, what does I say, 2.8. 2.68, so 2.7 megajoules, 30 minutes, one and a half kilowatts. So we've got a discrepancy of like five, 500 watts, which isn't bad, that's fine. That means we've got an efficiency of about 70% efficient. 70% efficient is all right, I thought. If you um, have any uh, objections to these calculations. Now remember, my fuel measurement isn't exactly super precise, so these can take, be taken with a slight 
pinch of pinch of salt, pinch of salt. So I can Sean Connery here, but they must be pretty close. Although I was kind of surprised at the one kilowatt rating of energy being put into the water, because I'm sure those little things are like rated at two two kilowatts, two and a half. But then again, perhaps mine is just old and tired and uh, needs uh, a new uh, heater bit inside, you know, the burn chamber, etc. But if you um, have any questions or objections or would like to, assume, you know, suggest any changes to these sums, but I'm seeing about 70% efficiency and we still hit the water up from 13 to 60 in, well, half an hour. So it's kind of, it looks, it looks okay to me. Okay, I'm pretty confident that the original Wobasto board is fucked. Someone asked if it had perhaps a thermal fuse or some sort of thing on it. Well, if it does, it's somewhere on here or any of these components or any of that. So, I don't know. I'm not an electronics guy. Some of you might be. So, if you're interested, if you want this board, I will happily post it to you so that you can dick about with it, etc, etc. So, the eBay Hungarian non can bus uh, Webasto ECU board totally works. Absolutely, plug and play, take the old board out, put that in, plug it in, connect 12 volt positive, fantastic. The downside is, is, like I say, it's a hundred and something plus pounds. So, if you get this, I think this Webasto heater thing cost me 30 pounds. Then the heater fan thing was actually fucked, and this was fucked. So that was another £30 for that, and then another £100 for that. So altogether, that heater cost me £160, give or take, sh shipping for things. So if you can manage to get a, you know, one of these from a scrap car, and we have seen it depends what model, or on the forums I've seen, Depending on what model of car you get it from, depends if it'll work or not, just on the normal ECU, or if you're gonna have to buy one of them. But like worst case scenario, like if you can get one of them for like 20 or 30 pounds, add that, you've now got an absolute fantastic standalone heater for 120 pounds. Reading, and well you better read it in the eBay description yourself, that this runs at full power till it gets to I think it's 70 something degrees, then it comes down to half power and it'll modulate. So if the temperature gets to 70, if that drops down to modulation and then the temperature drops down, it'll keep it in that range. But if the temperature keeps rising up to, I think it's 86 or 83 degrees, then it'll actually just turn off and go down to off mode once it's done that. Which is fine if you're heating up engine coolant for the start of, you know, a Saturday. It'll heat it up to 86 degrees and then turn back off again. But if you're heating something else up, I know you're running it through radiators and stuff, it'll keep it at that 70 degrees temperature by modulating up and down. That's fine, it's to totally doing it. I'm really impressed. So the next plan for this heater is to, I'm going to build my own ECU for it. Well, it's not my ECU. What I'm doing is copying somebody else's ECU and using their code. And we're going to turn that into a shower. We're going to put a shower head on the end of one of the pipes and ah, you'll see all that when it happens. Anyway. There'll be a link to this in the description. I've got no connections to this whatsoever. I don't haven't made anything from it. I bought full price for this. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it works, which is quite impressive. I'm, I'm glad it works. Anyway, I'm now waffling. So thanks for watching, guys.